question is that one of the one of the founding group and maybe in some ways the driver for the formation of Palestinian Christians in Australia. Perhaps yeah. um, Susan might say a little bit about the focus of that new group in a moment. Yeah. Um, very much in the same spirit as C uh, PN mm -hmm. and Sabil, of course, and we're delighted um, that Susan is not, has not only joined Sabil in her own right, but she's our guest speaker tonight, talking about, um, I think, Palestinians in Australia, but maybe it's Palestinian Christians in Australia. Either yeah. way, we will be delighted. So over to you, Susan. Thank you. Um, thank you, Greg, for giving me that opportunity to share my story with you all. Uh, before I start, I want to acknowledge the Bulbanyora people. I discovered that where I live in Wentworthville, um, it's the Bulbanyora people uh, of the Darug Nation, and I pay my respect to elders past, present, and future. Uh, this is a photo of my family, 14th of October, 1986. Um, actually, let me just show you where I am. Can you see this uh, young, very, very young 17 year old in my white, um, I, uh, white is my favorite color. Um, uh, so that was the first day I landed in Sydney, Australia with my parents, my two brothers and my two sisters. And this is at, this photo is at my uncle Henry's house when, you know, we're having very rich, very, um, uh, you know, Palestinian food. <laughs> uh, I was so excited as a 17 year old that I felt my future was ahead of me and that Australia loved me. But two days later, when I showed up at my new high school to register, my excitement began to fade. While standing in line to register in the school corridor, the girl in front of me turned to me and asked me a simple question. Where are you from? I smiled and, at her, detecting a Lebanese accent, and said, Palestine. Before she said, I'm from Lebanon, I heard a voice in my right ear speaks and says, it's Israel. I turned my head to the right, where the voice came from, and I saw a frowning brunette, Miss Bennett. I didn't know she was a teacher, and so I just replied back, now, it's Palestine. Then she raised her voice and said, it's Israel. I got really upset and I fired back at her. It's Palestine again. We had a few toing and froing, and until she said to me, if you want to live here, you'd better forget about Palestine. Oh. I was so upset. I went to the toilet and I cried my eyes out. I couldn't realize back then that I just came from a country where I lived all my life under an unfriendly military occupation where my movements and that of all my people were restricted and monitored. I just been out of a perpetual war, war zone that allowed no opportunity to live free just because I had the wrong religion. In the beginning, I thought Miss Bennett was not every Australian. I met the white Anglo-Saxon Australians at the Australian Embassy in Tel Aviv, and I thought everybody would be just as nice as them. But over the years in Australia, especially from 1986 since I, uh, I, I, I got here, and up until probably 2004, the Australian reality or understanding of Palestine was very much at odds with my reality. I was told by many people, just like Miss Bennett, that's, that there is no such thing as Palestinians. <laughs> that we should leave the promised land to the Jews and go and live in other Arab countries. On one occasion, a colleague at uni called me, allegedly joking after I got upset that I am a terrorist and an Arafat lover. Mm. Oh dear. On many occasions, I resorted to locking myself in the toilet and cried my eyes out. I felt 
all the time that I had to justify who I was. I had to prove my existence. I had to explain my Nakba story. I had to enlighten people that I lived under an occupation for many years and that it was news to them that the conflict was uh, a war between two, was not a war between two equals. They thought we, the Palestinians, were the aggressors. I had to explain to many people I met over the years that I lived under an, an occupation where I lived less than five kilometers away from the Ramallah Jerusalem checkpoint and that I could not go to Jerusalem um, without going through that checkpoint. I had to explain that I lived in a suburb on a hill where the opposite hill was an Israeli settlement built on Palestinian land. From my perspective, being brought up as a Christian, my community traces its uh, ancestry to the very Jewish people who are now occupying us. We believe that the Muslims come from Ishmael and that the Palestinian Christians, like the Jews, come from Isaac. We trace our origin to Judaism itself. And for us, we connect Judaism with Jesus's teaching as a continuation of the faith and the fulfillment of the prophecy. We believe that we were saved by his teachings and his sacrifice. For us, being displaced from Palestine has a double-edged sword. One is being extracted out of the land of our ancestors on which we lived for thousands of years. And the other is being no longer Jesus's living stones in the Holy Land. We are no longer carrying the cross walking via Dolorosa in Jerusalem. So we find ourselves in this diaspora, longing for an identity, holding onto the faith, remembering our Nakba, our grandparents' stories of loss, of humiliation, and listening to the latest news of the homeland that has been disappearing in front of our eyes. Nakba, catastrophe, and Gurba, which means exile, are the constant shadows that cast on our lives in the diaspora. My friend Jeremy Cox wrote a, thes wrote a thesis about us in the mid nineties about Palestinians living in Australia. After interviewing many Palestinians here in Sydney, he concluded in his thesis that our statelessness and our exile influenced our sense of national identity and developed a sense of Palestinian nationalism. Despite coming to Australia after uh, 1948 from various Arab countries that housed, that just housed our people as refugees without any rights and citizenship, we identify to ourselves and to each other once we land here in Australia as Palestinians. We might be refugees from Lebanon, Jordan, Gaza, the West Bank, the Gulf countries, Syria, and even um, from Israel itself as Arab Israelis. We, when we come to Australia, we call ourselves Palestinian. So our numbers are not accurately reflected in the census because the question of which country you came from doesn't help us answer this question accurately. So the numbers go between 7,000 Palestinians living in Australia to 60, 67,000 Palestinians living in Australia. We don't know really what the number is. So who are we? My distant cousin, Jamil Bachon, whom I met in Sydney and is one of the co-founders of the Australian Palestinian Club uh, was interviewed on SBS Arabic about his experience coming to Australia. And this is what he said. We lived our lives in Arab countries as strangers from prison to prison after we came out of Palestine. We lived in refugee camps in Lebanon. When I landed in Sydney airport, I felt free and respected like a human being. My coming to Australia was like 
manna from heaven. Australia is my second country and I would defend it just like I defend Palestine. This manna from heaven is the recognition of citizenship and of having freedom, freedom of speech, freedom of movement, freedom of practicing our religion. And this freedom is very precious for us because we were not given that opportunity to experience it. Like the Jews in the diaspora over millennia, we succeeded and continue to succeed in Australia to build a strong, multicultural, free and tolerant society. Like the Jews, despite the trauma, we forget and continue to forge ahead to keep existing as a strong Palestinian Christian community. What distinguishes our success is assimilation. So many intermarriages with Anglo, Saxons, with Italians, Greeks, other Arabs, and Lebanese. And today I wanna to share with you a unique story of uh, Auntie Tamam. Uh, she was working as a nurse in Palestine in the 1940s. Um, and uh, she met her husband, an officer in the British army. They got married and they left um, when the British were withdrawing from Palestine in, in 1947, 1948. They left and uh, went to England. Uh, a few years later, they migrated together in the 50s uh, to Australia. Uh, sadly, her British husband actually died and she met her Aussie husband, who is Uncle Don. Uh, he's here in, in, uh, in the photo on my wedding day with Auntie Tamam. Um, uh, and, and Uncle Don also was an uh, Australian Army officer and he, he served in, the, in World War II, Vietnam and the Korean War. Uh, and Auntie Tamam is my dad's best friend, uh, friend's sister. Uh, we met them here when we came to Australia, and they both now passed away. She actually passed away in, in, in Australia, but he, uh, when she passed away, he ended up going back, going to Jordan to live with her family because he had no one here in Australia. And um, he passed away this year and he's buried now in Jordan. So that's mm -hmm. an interesting story I thought you would, you would appreciate. I'm going to share with you a few Palestinian, Australian Palestinian stories as well. So you get you get it you, you get to understand where our community is coming from. The trickle of nationalistic Palestinians migrating to Australia from the Middle East keeps coming. Dr. Bassam Dalli is not only an academic; he's a veteran activist who's been activist for the past 15, 15 years in Australia. He is also the vice president of Palestinian Christians in Australia. Marcel Mansour is an OAM. And she's a visual artist who also depicts Palestinian national identity in her art. Her brother, Hani El Turk, who is also an OAM, is a, a famous uh, a journalist with El Telegraph, Arabic newspaper here in Sydney. And also he is the, he, uh, is the uh, writer of the book, Palestinians in Australia. John Hanna Karkar, he's a QC and is one of Australia's best senior councils in uh, uh, voted uh, best senior council in Australia. Um, entrepreneur Abraham Hatoum, he employs Palestinian tailors coming from the Middle East in his look smart chain of shops across Australia. Uh, Seher, uh, Armenian, Armenian Palestinian, uh, Seher Dermel Konyan and his Palestinian wife Amal, who come from Nazareth founded the Sindian National Foods in Australia, and they actually um, uh, uh, make vegan food, uh, especially falafel. Ludi Turki Wiggins is sister of Reem Boros, who is on our um, uh, Palestinian Christians in Australia committee. She's an Olympic athlete and won bronze medal in diving in the 2004 Olympics, Olympic Games uh, in Greece. Uh, so here's Zidane Gideon um, is a Palestinian Christian and she works at the Australian, sorry, at the Palestinian Embassy in Canberra um, for Dr. Azat Abdelhadi. John and Randa Snowbar, they founded 
Christian pilgrimage. They live in Perth and they take Australian pilgrims from Australia to Palestine and they give them a, an experience with Palestinian Christians uh, in the Holy Land. Father Aziz Abwe used to be, uh, used to be uh, an accountant, but he became a, an Orthodox priest in his 40s and he uh, rallied the Palestinian community together in Western Sydney and the community uh, built a, a, a big church for an Orthodox church, Antiochian Orthodox church, and Father Aziz is the parish of that church. You might think that our national identity ends with the first generation of migrants, but due to the various community groups, mainly to preserve culture and keep social connection, I believe that the identity has passed down to the next generation. My third cousins, <laughs> I've got too many cousins here, um, Amir and Joey Elaisa founded Knafe Jerusalem Street Food, mm -hmm. where they not only sell Knafe, but offer a dancing, dabke, and music experience while people eat knafe. I'm, I'm not sure if you've seen them on national television. Um, they've been interviewed everywhere. Mm. Um, they promote lots of other Arab um, uh, uh, culture. Uh, Councillor Kel Asfour, he's the mayor of Bankstown. Uh, he is also a distant cousin. <laughs> His Dad is cousin with my dad, mm -hmm. and he's a big supporter of the community, of the Palestinian community, and uh, promotes Palestinian rights in the, um, in the Bankstown area. Jason Demoni was born in New York, lived in Perth since the age of three. He is very passionate about Palestinian rights. He once did a debate uh, on Israel and Palestine with Rudy Rockman, who is a well-known uh, social media uh, Jewish activist. Uh, Nabil Hatoum, um, he's Australian born. His dad is a Palestinian refugee from Lebanon, Dr. George Hatoum, and his mom is Anglo-Saxon, Dr. Caroline Hatoum. He is uh, playing, he, sorry, he is um, uh, on the Palestinian Olympic swimming team. So he chose to play for, uh, to swim for Palestine. Um, Firas Shaheen is a young artist born in Dubai to Palestinian Christian parents. His mom, Mago Shaheen, is on our uh, board. Um, he is looking for his Palestinian identity from Australia, uh, but his deep longing for the land is ever present in his artistic expression. So I believe that our Palestinian Christian community is now mature enough that we've been in Australia for the past probably 60 years to understand that we need to become visible, as in the Palestinian Christian community to become visible. While some of us are indifferent to the Palestinian daily news, many of us are actively working with our Palestinian Muslim brothers and sisters and Jewish cousins to work, to work towards a just and lasting peace. It's a pity that we have ignored this unique identity, being Palestinian and Christian. So I call on all members of our society, whether in Australia or overseas, to stop the injustice, expose the real face of the occupation, eliminate the suffering of the children, thrown into jail, stop the ethnic cleansing of the people from their homes, their farms, and their olive groves. So we as Palestinian Christians, we have an obligation as both identities, being Palestinian and Christian, to speak up for justice, to stand up for what is right. Our Palestinian national identity demands that we speak up but also equally our Christian faith, our Christian identity requires us to, as Mika said thousands of years ago, he has shown you, O mortal, what is good 
And what does the Lord demand of you? To act justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. It's time for our Palestinian Christian community to come together and speak with one united voice for all the people in the Holy Land to transform that land from an occupation of the body and the spirit to a real Holy Land that belongs to the people believing in the one Holy God. It's time for the Palestinian Christians to stand up and speak truth to power. Thank you for listening to okay. me. Okay, shukran, shukran, shidan. See you.